Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we are going to be looking at a real co-op board package, and I'm gonna be showing you what you are expected to do when it comes time for you to complete one on your own or with your buyer's agent. So stay tuned, I'm covering everything here. All right, thank you for being here today. This is episode nine of my real estate investing video series. The reason why I put this episode together is because the board package for a co-op is really one of the most tedious parts of the purchase process. And it's the part that everyone is most intimidated by. But the truth of the matter is that if you're looking to buy a co-op in New York, you are most definitely going to have to complete this purchase application. And it is very tediously reviewed by management and by the board. So it has to be done absolutely impeccably. And that is the most challenging part about it, that it needs to be presented with utmost care, every single response has to be correct, and I'll walk you through the most significant parts of the application that have to be completely accurate. If board packages are handed in incorrectly to the management company, they will kick it right back to you. Sometimes they will kick it back after an entire month goes by when they're finally able to look at it. So you really want to make sure that it's done correctly the first time. And also if you do something that rubs management the wrong way when it comes to a mistake in the board application, it could really taint management's perception of the applicant and give them a harder chance at approval moving forward, even when you resubmit the application correctly. So these are really important things that I wanted to cover in this video. Also, you may be dismayed to hear that whether you're purchasing a condo or a co-op, there is a purchase application that is submitted. Though the condo application may be a bit simpler or not picked apart as closely as the co-op application is, you really can't get out of paperwork when you're buying a co-op or a condo in New York. So it's best to at least see this stuff, get familiar with it, and just be ready to jump in when it comes time. There is an exception. You do not need to complete a board application or a purchase application when you're buying a sponsor unit. So I covered sponsor units a couple of episodes back. You can check on that video to learn all about them. But that is the one instance when you do not need to complete a purchase application or if you're buying a private house or a townhouse. Those are your only exceptions. So if you're buying real estate in New York, you're gonna have to do this. It is something that your buyer's agent helps you with greatly, so you don't need to worry too much, but it's still good to be familiar with it. So I'm gonna be showing you a sample board application. This is a real board application from a co-op. Usually co-ops do not release these documents or send out their due diligence or sales application paperwork until they have like a solid buyer usually the owner of the apartment has to pay for these files to be released so for that reason and because this is a real board application that I'm showing you as an example I'm not sharing what co-op the application is for and I pulled out the most important pieces of the application that I'm gonna show you in this video. And I chose an application that I felt was pretty representative of what they tend to look like. So of course, every building's application is going to look a little bit different. Documents that are requested always will be different, but this is a good example of what to expect. Okay, so I've pulled up the document here and I'm going to be showing you the important pages that you will need to know how to do when it's time for your board application. So first we have the cover page. This just asks for information about the unit being sold, the current owner's name and contact information, and the applicant or the purchaser's name and contact information. This page also lists the documents that are going to be required for you to provide along with this completed application. In the case of this co-op, they want you to provide your photo ID, the contract of sale, which is the document that you and the seller have signed once you've aligned on everything, the completed purchase application, which are the pages that we're about to go through here, the Aztec form, which is a document that's provided by your bank if you are getting a mortgage, the commitment agreement, which is also provided by the bank. This is your official mortgage approval. 
the required checks for the application fees, these will need to be bank certified checks and they are included when we submit the application. A present employer letter, your federal and state income tax returns for the past three years, is state transfer information which is only needed if the unit that's being purchased is in a state sale which means that the current owner has passed away. Bank statements, so we typically include checking and savings bank statements as well as statements for any brokerage accounts that you have and we use the most recent three months to submit. And there's a note that this application requires two versions to be submitted, one original, which means that you have a wet signature, so the purchaser and seller physically sign this original version, and then there is one copy that they also want submitted, which is just a photocopy of the entire document. Okay, now that that's done, we have the start of the purchase application. So this page asks for some more information about the unit being sold. Here, the buyer of the apartment will be filling in their basic information, address, contact info. The next page requires the seller's information. Then it asks for the purchaser's lender, which is the bank their real estate attorney information, as well as their broker, their real estate agent's information. And on the following pages, there is some legal language that the buyer is responsible for reading and understanding. There is a mention of the minimum percent cash down payment that's allowed for purchase in this co-op. In this case, it's 20%, which means that you are only allowed to finance 80% of the purchase. That's the maximum. And of course, you could finance less of the purchase if you wanted to. Finally, there is a statement that you must acknowledge that states that all of the information that you are providing in this document is true and you are prompted to provide your signature at the bottom of these pages. Okay, so moving along, next we are asked about any additional occupants that will be living in the apartment. This includes anybody that will be living in the apartment with you, like children or relatives. You're then asked about criminal history. They want you to confirm that you've never been convicted of a crime and they also ask about the additional occupants in the unit and to confirm whether they have ever had a driver's license or a professional license suspended or revoked. You're also asked to confirm if you've ever been involved in any type of civil litigation. And again, you're asked to sign these pages. Next comes the most tedious part of the application. These next few pages are the financial statement. Here you must enter in the bank name, the account numbers, and the balances for all of your bank accounts, your retirement accounts, your brokerage accounts. Of course, if you have bank accounts that total in great excess of the price of the apartment that you're buying, you don't need to show everything. Let your buyer's agent advise based on whether you are trying to purchase a con or a co-op as to how much money you should show that you have on this financial statement. You just want to make sure that you show a safe amount of money that clearly shows that you have the funds to cover your down payment as well as cover closing costs and any post-closing liquidity requirements that would need to be satisfied. I talked about post-closing liquidity in my episode condos versus co-ops if you want to look back at that. Something really important to note here is that the dollar amounts for every bank account that you show in this financial statement have to exactly match down to the penny the dollar amounts in the most recent bank statements that you are providing in the form of the supplemental documentation in this application. So in the prior page, it said that they were requiring you show your bank statements. The most recent statement has to show the exact dollar amount as the amount of money you're putting in this financial statement. If management is reviewing this application and they don't find a corresponding matching bank statement for every single bank account that you list in this financial statement, they will kick it back to you and tell you that it's incomplete. You'll also add in any real estate that you own here. And next, you'll add in all of your liabilities. Liabilities include all debts, including existing mortgages that you may have, student loans, car payments, excessive credit card debt, etc. It goes without saying that this liabilities page, of course, looks best when it's as minimal as possible, but you also need to be truthful. Finally, at the bottom, you subtract your liabilities from your assets and you get your net worth, which you write in where it asks you to, and you sign it to confirm that everything that you've wrote in this statement is factual. All right, so we're done with that and we are moving on to your 
prior residence and employer information. So here you are asked to go back five years and list out any prior addresses that you've lived at and provide the landlord's contact information for each. They want to see the dates that you lived at each residence, so you'll provide that as well. And next you'll add in your employment information. So your occupation, your current employer, your length of employment at the firm, gross annual income, and contact info for the employer. Again, you sign the bottom of the page. There are a couple of legal pages in between that are unique to this particular co-op that don't require any input from the applicant, but it is information that the buyer is expected to read, understand, and be able to be knowledgeable about just in case the board was to ask you a question related to any of the information during your board interview, for example, just to make sure that you're knowledgeable. We're in the home stretch though. This hasn't been too bad, right? I don't know. Next, you're asked to complete an authorization form for a release of your credit report. Each applicant is required to have their credit check. Additionally, you do the same thing for the release of a criminal report. That's essentially a background check. And then you find a data verification page. Here, you'll re-enter the address and landlord information that we had previously entered in earlier. It is common for multiple pages of the board application to be redundant like this one. Next, there's another page where we enter in some repeat information, and this page serves as a cover page for the co-op. Some legal pages follow, which require the applicant's signature. In these pages, they communicate various co-op policies, including their right of first refusal and the procedures that must be followed for alterations, etc. Oftentimes, the house rules are also included in this packet. The purchaser is expected to review the house rules very closely, make sure they're familiar with all of the rules. And here, at the very end, there are a few more legally required pages this is stuff like the lead-based paint warning statement. There's a page that confirms that the purchaser's tax returns that were provided are legitimate, which requires the purchaser's signature, and a page for the request for transcript of the applicant's tax return. Finally, the applicant is prompted to sign one last acknowledgement page stating that all the information provided in the document is true, and that's it, you're done. So that pretty much sums up the data that needs to be input into the document. Document. And of course, what takes time is pulling all of the documents that are also required that we went over in that cover page, pulling everything that's relevant, compiling it into a really a report that looks very presentable for the co-op to review. When I put together my board packages, I really look at it like I am submitting the most important final report that I've ever submitted in college or at work, for example. That's the type of respect that the boards really want to see has been put into this document. So for example, I put a table of contents. Every single item in that list of required documents on that cover page in the beginning has its own number on its table of contents and a corresponding divider in the report where that item is included. These board packages are then beautifully bound with a shiny cover like a book. They look beautiful by the time they're ready for submission and that is part of your presentation to management and to the board. You want to present yourself in the very best possible way that you can when all they're seeing is a representation of you on paper. So you want this to go as easy as possible. You don't want management frustrated because they can't find documents that they need. You want everything to be easy and straightforward so that no one gets fed up and that everyone is just rooting for you to get this approval. That sums up this episode on co-op board applications. I hope this episode was really helpful. As always, if you ever have any questions about anything that was covered in these videos or anything real estate related at all, you can email me at christina.kremitis at element.com. Additionally, if you would like for me to represent you in your property purchase or if you are selling real estate in the city, you can also feel free to email me anytime. I am never too busy to take on new clients and I would be more than happy 
for the opportunity to work with you on that. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. It will really help me to see the interest that you guys have in these videos. Your feedback so far has been amazing, so I really appreciate it. And please, once you subscribe, click the bell icon, which will turn on post notifications, which means that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified so that you don't miss anything. And finally, Instagram is a really great way for us to keep in touch on a more personal level. I am very responsive on Instagram and you'll get a glimpse into my real estate life, my home life and everything in between. So it's just another way for you to see me beyond this couch, which is where I do all of these real estate episodes. My handle on Instagram is downtown native. So go give that a follow and send me a message and let me know that you are coming from this video series and that would also be really cool for me to say thank you guys so much for watching this video and for being a part of this video series if you ever have any topics that you would like for me to cover in this series please also send me an email or a message on instagram letting me know i'd be happy to address anything that you guys want to know and stay tuned for the next episode episode 10, where I will be covering what to expect in a board interview. Thank you guys so much again. I'll see you soon.